I am so thrilled that we are bringing Mark Chase on as an associate rector here at All Saints Church starting January 18th, yes. I believe is your first day. That is correct. Uh, and I wanted just you all to have a chance to do what we've had a chance to do who are on the search committee, which is to get to know uh, Chase a little bit. Uh, and so I just want to have a little conversation here, introduce yourself. Um, and, and first of all, I know that your ordination is not in the Episcopal Church, but you yes. kind of your origin story is in the yeah, Episcopal yeah, Church. Yeah. So can you talk a little about that and tell us a little about your spiritual journey? Yeah, yeah. No, that's a great question. I love that word, that phrase, origin story. Yeah. It makes it sound like I'm a Marvel <laughs> that's like, right. superhero or something. Uh, but yeah, so my one of the beginnings of my spiritual journey uh, is in the Episcopal Church. So in a lot of ways... Like, this is a homecoming yeah. that I did not see coming, uh -huh. right? Okay, so yeah. my, my uh, uh, time here at All Saints, right? Because, uh, yeah, the first place where I read scripture out loud uh -huh. was in the Episcopal Church. Wow. Uh, the first place where I joined the chorus of those who would announce the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ uh -huh. was, was in the Episcopal Church. So, yeah. so if you're watching or, or listening <laughs> to this, uh, just uh, use this as encouragement to remember that uh, God holds our memories and our experiences. Uh, God holds those things as sacred, right? So this is like a beautiful return for me mm. uh, in a lot of ways. So yeah, Church of the Ascension. Yeah, yeah where in, was that? In Mount Vernon, New York, okay. right? That's where I grew up. Uh, for most of my life in, in, in Mount Vernon. Uh, and so I was an acolyte. Uh -huh. I actually got confirmed in the Episcopal Church. Uh -huh. And I remember the day before my confirmation, I went and I got a fresh haircut. I mean, you, you <laughs> yeah, can't tell. Right. Yeah. You can't tell right now. But, you know, back then that was a big deal for me. And so I wanted to embody physically what was... Uh, uh, what the spirit was bearing witness to. Mm -hmm. So I got a fresh haircut and a nice outfit to, for my confirmation. But yeah, but those were the beginnings or some of the beginnings of my spiritual journey. And I say some of the beginnings because even before the Episcopal Church, uh, which my father and mother were guides for uh, in my spiritual journey, uh, the first uh, beginning uh, in my spiritual formation was hip hop. So my first pastors and spiritual leaders were KRS-One, Nas, uh, Biggie, mm -hmm. and Tupac, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so those were my first spiritual leaders. Those were the first people who showed me how to do faith, yeah. even though that's not what I consciously uh, understood them as doing, right? Like when Tupac asked the question, I wonder if heaven has a ghetto, right? He's not asking the question, are there literal project tenements right. up in the sky somewhere? Yeah. What Tupac is theologizing and asking is God in your economy, is there room for the marginalized, right? Yeah, so yeah, that was yeah. like my first spiritual formation. So I have to pay homage to hip hop. So yeah. even before the Episcopal Church, uh, there was hip hop. But yeah, but that's where I started. That's where I first read scripture. Uh, that's where I acolyted and, and, and did all the things. And so after that part of my spiritual journey, then I took a tour uh -huh. in the tradition known as Pentecostalism, okay. specifically the Church of God in Christ. I don't know if some of y'all may know what, what that is. Uh -huh. And my guide in that part of my spiritual journey was my older sister, Nikki. Mm. So at that time, uh, you know, Nikki had become born again, and she was and still is uh, a praying woman. And my sister Nikki was praying for all of Mount Vernon <laughs> in 1990s. Yeah, yeah, she was praying yeah, for everybody, yeah. right? So, I mean, you couldn't get on the same bus with her without her praying, praying for you, right? Praying, yeah. So, but praise God, that included her little brother, yeah, right? Yeah. And what the Pentecostal tradition gave me was this importance in the centering of my emotions in my spiritual experience, mm. right? So to have intimacy with God was to be an emotional being. Right, those two things were, were never separated from yeah. me, and I got that from the Pentecostal tradition, uh -huh. right? And so, yeah, so she gave me that, and then uh, that was me probably until I moved out here to go to Fuller. Right, what and drew you to Fuller? So what drew me to Fuller was the palm trees. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There is no Not deep bad. spiritual answer. <laughs> I Googled seminary, yeah. and that was the best looking picture, and yeah. I said, okay. I think I'm going to apply there. Okay. <laughs> I wish I had a better answer, yeah. answer for you, but sometimes it's like that, right? Yeah. Uh, but at Fuller, what I actually experienced was uh, the theological frame, a theological framework for white supremacy, yeah. right? Yeah. So I was being... Uh, yeah, I was being introduced to a white supremacist, uh, patriarchal, 
uh, Eurocentric framework, even though I didn't know that's what I was getting. Mm -hmm. So I'll never forget my church history professor standing uh, proudly in front of the class, right? Mm -hmm. And he mentioned that we were going to be studying the Reformation, right? Because yeah. the Reformation and church history, you were meant to assume that those two things were the same. Right. Right. right, right, right. <laughs> like church history was the Reformation right. and the Reformation was church history. And so he goes through all the usual suspects. We're going to study Luther, Calvin, Zwingli. Right. And then at the end of the syllabus, there is this literal asterisk. There's an asterisk at the end of the syllabus. And that's where I saw names like James Cone, right. Gustavo Gutierrez, womanist theology, mm -hmm. Minjung theology, and right? Asterisk. With a literal, like I'm not yeah. even, yeah. I can't make this up. And under or above that was the phrase, some other theologies, right? And so I was getting this Eurocentric grounding, right? And this yeah. white supremacist grounding, because right. often why white supremacy is so hard to identify, let alone dismantle, is that white supremacy often passes itself off as normalcy. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. it's just, it's, it's not going to come off as superiority. It's just going to come off as default. Right, right. Like right. the other day, um, this, this image was making the rounds on social media of uh, a full-term baby inside a mother's womb. It was a I medical saw illustration, that. I saw right? That. Yeah, yeah. And, and, the, and the baby and the mother were both black. Yeah. It had never occurred to me that I'd never seen that yeah. before. Yeah, I had the same reaction. Like some doctor in Nigeria. Yeah, I think a doctor in Nigeria. Yeah, it was just amazing. Yeah, and it yeah. never occurred to me that I'd never seen that. Every image from mm -hmm. the time I was in grade school mm -hmm. up to now of that process mm -hmm. was of a white body. Yeah. Right, yep. and so I was getting that grounding, that whiteness as normal, you know, in, in a mm. white supremacist uh, framework, without knowing and understanding that that's what I was getting. So that was my the beginning of my okay. spiritual okay. journey at yeah, Fuller. Yeah. But praise God, I also had professors like Dr. Ralph Watkins, uh -huh. Love Seacrest, who are both now at Columbia Theological Seminary, mm -hmm. who were exploding that notion, right? Yeah. Who were making sure that I knew the the context the real context of Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the body that Jesus inhabited, right? And, mm -hmm. and the neighborhood that Jesus called home, a neighborhood that was over-policed, that was so over-policed that it made it into his teaching. That's right. Right? As, as uh, Obrey Hendricks, Dr. Obrey Hendricks has this, uh, helps us with this, but, but he says that that teaching where Jesus says, if someone, uh, if someone asks you, carry your, uh, hey, carry my backpack for one mile, you carry it too, too. Yeah. right? He's like, that, is, that was about the Roman soldiers. Pressing them into service. Because yeah. who else could say, carry my backpack but a mm -hmm. Roman soldier? Mm -hmm. But someone who had power and jurisdiction over you, yeah. right? And Jesus is saying, part of the ways that you reclaim your dignity in a world like that is through sarcasm. Like, oh, you want, <laughs> yeah. oh, you want me to carry it one mile? Uh, how about two? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Oh, we done took it to the Walmart. You want to go to the Costco? That's you know right. what I mean? yeah. and So yeah. Jesus is giving them the tool mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. sarcasm to reclaim their dignity, right? So this is, so they helped me understand and remember that this Jesus was born to a poor brown teenage mother who sought political asylum in Africa, mm -hmm. right? And I say mm -hmm. Africa, not mm -hmm. Egypt, because mm -hmm. sometimes we like to pretend Egypt ain't Africa, yeah, right, 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 you right. know? So, so they, they gave me that and gave me some of the groundwork of what yeah. would even lead me here uh, to All Saints, right? Uh -huh. so, so I got both of those things right. at Fuller Seminary. And then also the place where I'm coming from now, a fellowship church, uh -huh. uh, I got the gift through one of my colleagues and good friends, Christine Su. I got the yeah. gift of understanding what soul care is, right? Talk about that. Uh, yeah, yeah. So Richard Rohr talks yeah. about the soul as being the face you had before you were born, right? Mm -hmm. Like how beautiful of an mm -hmm. image is that, right? So, so my friend and colleague, Christine, she gave me the tools and the understanding to know how to care for that, mm -hmm. right? To know how to wait for that, right? There's this, uh, I think it's Ruth Haley Barton, there's this quote where she says that uh, your soul is like a deer <laughs> waiting in the woods. It's like if, you, if you're too hurried or if you're too panicky, it won't come out, but you got to sit still. And if you just sit still and wait, it'll come to you rather than you chasing it down, right? Isn't that beautiful imagery? Yeah. So, so I picked up some of those tools and, and some of that understanding uh, through her and through the writings of, of Henry Nowen mm -hmm. and, 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 and Richard Rohr and Ruth Haley Barton. So each phase along the spiritual yeah. journey, I've had, a, I've had a faithful guide to kind of help me, help me through that, right? So yeah. so yeah, that's a big question. No, that's- Sorry, that's, I hope I didn't preach No, no, already, that's okay, it's kind of occupational yeah. hazard, it's okay, it's okay. So, so yeah. you got, uh, 
you, you got ordained. Tell, tell us about like your ordination. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, how that yeah. happened. Yeah, so it was at a local church right here in Pasadena. So a group of elders and pastors mm -hmm. and a community that was bearing witness to what God was doing in me. Was they, it Pastor Manning's church? Yeah, yeah. yeah Manning's, Manning's, yeah. Right? So they laid hands on me and bore witness to what God was doing. So it was a communal experience. Mm -hmm. It was a communal thing rooted in a, a real community, in a real church, yeah. in a real local area. Oh, yeah. Right? And so that was in uh, 2010. As a matter of fact, I still have the, the picture. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hanging uh, in, in my office, in my house, and, and it's one of the proudest pictures I own. But there's this big hand. I can't remember if it's, if it's Kerwin's hand or yeah. somebody else's, but it can almost look like it's my hand, like I'm yeah. doing it to myself. Yeah. But, but someone was uh, ordaining me and, and, and blessing me and recognizing mm. the call to ministry uh, on my life. And then you've been a, a, working as a pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That. Almost two decades. Yeah, then. yeah. <laughs> since 2007. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. So it's been a while. Um, yeah, since I've uh, been a pastor. Uh, so, yeah, almost, yeah, approximately 15, 16 years of, of experience. Uh, pastor, yeah. Having the honor and privilege of, of being yeah. called pastor. Yeah. Now, we, one of the things I love about All Saints Church is there's a lot of people here who yeah. have come from more conservative evangelical denominations. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and some of them really thought that they were done with church right. and, and, and there'd been a lot of damage done. Uh, and they found, have found a home and are finding a home yeah. here at All Saints Church and, and, and are making sort of that transition. And in some ways, yeah. you're yeah, kind yeah. of yeah. walking that same journey. Can, yeah, you, can yeah. you talk a little about what's sort of causing you to make this transition in your life right yeah now. yeah yeah first i want to say thank you to anyone who has paved the way uh in this journey for me uh, i'm sincerely indebted thank you sincerely uh but then also i just want to start with that word conservative right yes yeah. because i think a lot of times we don't spend enough time parsing that word uh -huh. uh, and i think at least for me i always attributed that word conservative with this attribute of like uh you, you know, like moral uprightness or modesty, like I'm conservative, I'm conservative. Yeah. But if you really think about it and just distill it, to be a conservative uh, simply means that when you look around and you see the status quo, mm -hmm. you are committed to conserving the status quo mm -hmm. because it benefits you, mm -hmm. right? So when you think about the word conservative, it simply means someone or a line of thinking that's committed to conserving and preserving the status quo mm. and keeping the world, keeping our community as it is because mm. it benefits you, mm. right? That's the true yeah. historical definition of how a conservative has functioned yeah. here uh, in America, right? right? So, you know, you, you could be a liberal and be conservative. That's right, that's right. <laughs> if yeah. you look around and you see that's the right. status quo and you're like, you know, I like this and I kind of want it to stay that way. You're conservative. You're a conservative, That's right? right? Yeah. And so, and so when I, but when I look at All Saints Church, the thing that excites me is that, and, and, here, and here, here's the other thing too. Yeah. This is why I can definitively say when I look at scripture, I can say Jesus was not a conservative. Right. Because yeah. Jesus was not committed to preserving and maintaining the, the status quo. You don't right. see that in any of his right. teachings and the way that he lived and carried himself. Mm -hmm. Like there's a Samaritan woman at a well. I'm going to have a conversation with her and drink from her same cup. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to include a bunch of yeah. folks that people who claim to do religion really well yeah. wouldn't even stand next to. Yeah. Right? Uh, Jesus was clearly not a conservative. Jesus yeah. was a disruptor. Well, that's what right? we talk about, the revolutionary Jesus. Yes, the revolutionary yeah. Jesus, right? So, yeah. so when I look at All Saints, I see a bunch of disruptive people. I don't yeah. see progressives as much as I see people who are disruptive, mm. right? I'm, I'm going to say that again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look into the camera and say <laughs> it, right? Uh, I don't see folks who are as much progressive as folks who are committed to being disruptive, mm -hmm. right? So just, just, just touch somebody if you're watching this with somebody and say, don't call me progressive unless you're willing to call me disruptive, right? So, so that's what I see, a community that is committed and down for some disruption. Yeah. And that was one of the things that I, I could see. I could, I could see myself being a part of a community like that, hmm. that's sincerely committed to being a disruption, that's sincerely committed to being a holy inconvenience, mm -hmm. or as Dr. King would even call it, to, to being the conscious of the state, right? Mm -hmm. Reminding mm -hmm. the state of its mm -hmm. true role, mm -hmm. right? And, and just being a nuisance, a holy nuisance, yep. right? So, 
So that's what I see. I see uh, a community that's committed to being yeah. uh, disruptive, and, and, and I was attractive, and I wanted to be a part of that. Well, and it's just like, that's what I love about our physical location right across yeah, from City yeah, Hall, yeah. Yeah. is we are right there, and it's right where we should be. And yes. it doesn't matter what political party is in City Hall. Right, right, right. The church's role is still the same. Exactly. And, and, yeah. and part of what I love is that you've been rooted in this, na- in this area, yeah, in, yeah. in this Pasadena, Monrovia, yeah. all this area. Yeah. And you also, like, you know, there's... The, you know, they're, they're, if you look at the pastors in the Pasadena area who embody what you're just talking about, yeah. I don't know anyone who does it more than, than Pastor Kerwin. Yeah, 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 um, absolutely. And, and so, you know, yeah. so grateful mm. that, uh, that that's the work that, that, that yeah. you're going to be doing with us here. You're not yes. doing it for us. You're yes. doing, you know, yes. we're going to be working together on this. Yep. Um, and then also bringing some of the work that you've been doing at the Fellowship Center for Racial yep. Reconciliation absolutely. in Monrovia. Yeah. Um, and, and helping us sort of say, okay, what does that look like mm-hmm. here? Mm-hmm. Um, and talk to John Williams about that I realized that even our sort of he said well you know your all's racial justice resolution was a part of the forming of that Mm -hmm. Um, and so you know great I'm really looking forward to being in in deeper relationship uh, Mm -hmm. deeper relationship there yeah yeah. Um, one of the things that we talk about here a lot and you all have heard this is we do talk about the revolutionary Jesus Mm -hmm. and just like you were saying one of the things that was revolutionary about Jesus is he said I'm gonna lay a table and everyone gets to come yeah yeah Um, and, and, uh, part of what we had to wrestle with in feeling so strongly the Holy Spirit was calling you to this place Mm -hmm. was, okay, you're not ordained in the Episcopal Mm -hmm. church. Yeah. yeah. Um, you've got a grounding in the Episcopal church, you know, the Episcopal church, but you're not ordained here. And so we went and had a conversation with Bishop Taylor and sat down with him and we sort of looked around and we said, we, we want to make sure that if you're going to be an associate rector here, Mm -hmm that you have a full exercise of ministry the same as Sally, Alfredo, me, Susan, anybody. And we've worked out a way that that can happen. And that's that's actually one of the great sort of comprehensiveness of of Anglicanism, Uh, that we can do that. (laughs) Um, And it's around things that we already do here at All Saints Church, Mm -hmm. which is we already have lots of people gathered around the table on Sunday and we have all the kids laying their hands yeah, over, yeah. over the elements and we, you know, we have the congregation saying the Eucharistic yeah, prayer. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, the only uh, question that we ever had as a search <laughs> committee was, well, do you have a pastor's heart? And you clearly have a pastor's heart. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, but then some of the other things that we discovered is like National Cathedral yeah, yeah, um, yeah. has a canon yeah. with a position description that's not too different from yours, mm-hmm. who's an ordained Baptist minister yeah, yeah right, um, right not an episcopal priest right. and so this isn't even new for the episcopal yeah church. yeah yeah um and so really so grateful yeah. that you and you want to say a little bit about uh, your family yeah 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 so my wife and i and we got two little boys elijah and ezra ages mm-hmm. four and two so you know pray pray your for wife brother, is, not, not getting enough sleep uh, is kiana, kiana there you kiana, go she is incredible she is a marriage and and, and family therapist mm-hmm. so yeah, we've been together six years now. My goodness, yeah. time, time flies. Yeah, just eight in total. So uh-huh. yeah, yeah. I actually better at church, at, at, at fellowship. Uh, I asked her out on a date, and the first time she said no. Uh-huh. And then I, I I waited about another six months, and I got up the courage, and I asked her again. And the second time she said yes, and then we went out for a frozen yogurt. And uh-huh. yeah, the rest is is, is kind of history. history. But, but she's incredible. She's wise. She's intelligent. She is probably uh, the best person I know uh, mm-hmm. when it comes to uh, her intuition. Mm-hmm. Uh, she can read people, circumstances, situations uh, just very, very well. So she has so much just embodied wisdom mm-hmm. and, and I listen to it. I try to listen to it as often as I, yeah. as often as I possibly can. But yeah, she's incredible. So. That's great. You got any closing words for folks? Uh, yeah, I'm just so excited to uh, be a part of the All Saints community. And really, hear me good on this one. I'm excited to learn from y'all, right? Uh, I am not an an expert, right? Dr. (laughs) Willie Jennings talks about this a lot. He says that uh, specifically uh, the world of Christian education is haunted, right? And it's haunted by trying to reproduce um, this self-sufficient white male who is master of his surroundings and is completely competent in all things, right? And, and I am not that. Obviously, I'm not white, right? But I am not an expert. I'm on the journey. Uh, and I'm really excited to learning from, from all that 
y'all would have to give me in this journey and our family and our boys. So I'm really excited to learn and just be a part of the community to uh, sit down with you, hear your story, uh, hear the places um, that have brought you to this place. Uh, so I'm just excited to get to know you and to be a part uh, of following a revolutionary Jesus with you. So, yeah. Fantastic. Well, yeah. January 18th, I January can't wait. 18th. Something to yeah, look forward yeah. to in the new year. Yes. Thanks.